Have you had experiences with a toxic person or a narcissistic person that you completely forget? Do you completely forget the horrible things that they do or minimize them or wonder if things even happen the way you thought they happened, almost like as you're in a fog and totally forget what happened? Has that happened to you? There is a name for it and there's a reason for it. So let's talk about that. I'm Lise Colucci and hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and let's get started talking right away here. So this abuse amnesia, this amnesia that happens, forgetting what happens when the toxic person in your life has done something to you, has created drama and arguments and manipulations and toxic patterns in your life, and you completely forget they happen. Basically what happens is you have a cognitive suppression of the event and a cognitive suppression of all of the multiple occurrences of this going on. It's a protective mechanism and a self-defense mechanism in order for you to stay safe in toxic situations. I know, ironic, right? Because what you want is out, but it's our, our brain's way of keeping us safe when we are having to survive things, when we are in survival mode and having to endure and survive situations. It's a very primitive and basic thing that our brains do in order to keep us moving forward and living our lives while having to survive situations. It's not the part of the brain that logically knows, oh, I could just walk away. It's almost like a disassociation that happens from the triggering event, from the toxic manipulations and tactics used against you from all of the abuses. So much so that in a matter of seconds, even minutes, hours, days, whatever it is, the memory of what happens fades. If you disassociate quickly, then it could be happening while it's happening, where you stop thinking that what's happening at the moment is an offense against you and you start seeing it as something you need to fix and you forget and almost like, you know, check out from the thing that's happening it makes it really hard when trying to leave toxic situations doesn't it because you can't remember you can't remember you can't articulate a story you can't tell anyone to get the validation to know if it's even toxic what you're going through because you can't remember or you remember pieces of it or you remember how it started but you don't remember all of the things that were said and done. I know that when people come out of toxic relationships and when they're in coaching and trying to work their way through what actually happened, a lot of times memories will come up and it's like a fog lifts or a curtain, you know, parts, and then there's clarity and there's awareness of the things that they live through. So what happens? Why does this happen to us? When you are in a traumatic situation, well, you're in any situation, but especially under a stressful traumatic situation, brain chemistry gets involved, right? So let's talk about what happens in the brain chemistry a bit so that you can understand a bit about what's going on. There's five really major things that happen here. One is oxytocin. Okay, so if you are having an argument call it an argument with a toxic person, right? If you're having a situation where they're gaslighting you, let's say, and you, you start out having a conversation, it spins quickly into a debate, which turns really rapidly on you where they start gaslighting you and attacking with the gaslighting and you start getting enraged, upset, all of the things that happen when you're being, when someone's gaslighting you, right? And then, and then that turns into blame shifting and suddenly you're caretaking the narcissistic person. Well, what happens in that caretaking or what happens in the coming back together? Say they give you silent treatment and then suddenly they talk to you again, or say you kiss and make up, so to speak, right? Whatever it is that happens when there's the physical connection with the narcissistic person, if it's a parent, maybe they they give you a, an ounce of affection, whatever it is, it raises your oxytocin. Oxytocin is a bonding chemical. If you have that bonding chemical going on for someone that's treating you terribly, the brain starts to get confused, right? We start to, we are attached and love someone who is harming us. Okay, so there's one piece. Another piece is the dopamine. So dopamine is what causes the feeling of craving and longing. It causes the feelings and the actions of pursuit and it motivates you. 
So what happens when you are with a toxic person is they are lying to you, they're gaslighting you, they're projecting, they're blaming, they're calling you names, they're going silent, they're walking away, they're threatening, whatever they're doing. And then afterward, your feeling of lack of closure in the argument or, or discussion, your feeling of not being heard, your feeling of needing something from it starts to raise your levels of dopamine. Your dopamine become you get in a dopamine cycle where you're chasing the need for an answer. You're chasing the need for things to be better. You're chasing. So it creates that drive, that motivation to seek resolution because that's what we should do in healthy relationships, right? Is seek resolution when there's any conflict. Well, it goes kind of overboard because other things come into play. So you've got this motivating force of the dopamine happening and you've got the oxytocin when there's any connection or, or thoughts of them can even create the, the oxytocin, remembering the good times, boom, you're flooded with it, okay? And then, and then you've got androgynous opioids. So that is a brain chemical reaction, basically in a nutshell, withholding in life withholding creates pain literal pain use or attaining creates pleasure so it's a brain reaction of pain pleasure and that's why it hurts so bad guys that's part of why the pain is so intense because there's a ton of withholding happening there's no closure there's no conversation there's no resolution there's not being heard i could go on and on okay so then another thing is your cortisol levels. Your cortisol levels are rising. The stress of that creates all kinds of havoc in your body, in your nervous system, in your emotions, and in your thoughts. High levels of cortisol are not healthy for you. So, and high levels of cortisol are gonna keep you in a feeling of angst and conflict, right? So that's going on at the same time. Now think about it. When you've got high levels of cortisol going on at the same time as high levels of oxytocin going on, your brain starts to go, okay, I need to check out from this. This is conflicting and confusing. And in order for me to feel okay and go with the feelings of oxytocin, I'm going to have to forget all the stuff this cortisol rising is telling me, right? So another thing that happens is the adrenaline's pumping. When your adrenaline pumps, think about it. You can do amazing and astounding things, but you don't know how you got there. You're in a rushed state. You're in a sped up state. Nervous, your nervous system is going really fast. You don't feel things as much. You don't react to things as much. You just do, okay? And so if you're shutting down and dissociating and checking out from the actual thing that's happening because of this mix of chemicals going on, it's, it's a fast and rapid thing and kind of a numbing agent, all right? So that's kind of why it happens. That's the, the, the brain part of why it happens in a nutshell. And... Remembering that this is a survival skill can be helpful. Remembering that, that this isn't healthy. If you find yourself having these episodes, something is up, okay? Something is wrong in the relationship or something needs to be checked for yourself as to why you're not coping with relationship, with conflicts and stuff in the moment so that you can see if the person is even toxic or not, right? Okay, so what can you do about it? What can you do? There's quite a few things you can do. Obviously, get out of the relationships, right? Or step away or go no contact. That's a given. So let's let's talk about even afterward, when you're away and you've been away for a while, it's still there because see, you've already checked out from it. You've already taken that memory and shoved it into the back of your subconscious and put it in a box somewhere and you don't wanna open it. So it's important to open it and look at these things. So making a list of the toxic things this person has done, even if you can only remember a teeny tiny bit, even if it's like all you write is that time we went to the park, even if that's enough for your memory to go, oh yeah, I remember that. Okay, anything that helps you remember the toxic things this person did and the things that you lived through, and this is not to make a list so that you feel terrible, this is to make a list so that you remember, so that you can recall and so you can process. If you are in still with a toxic person or you are in up the part of recovery and healing that you don't know which way to turn or you don't have a, a, a plan or even if you do have a plan, make a written recovery plan for yourself. Write out what you think it should look like, what you would hope for for yourself. Make a plan so that you can stick to it because the thing is when you slip 
into cognitive dissonance, when you slip into this amnesia effect, you forget to keep working on yourself and you focus back on the toxic person. So make a plan. You may need to talk to someone to do that, to help you create a plan. And, and that's not unusual to need that. Okay. Um, and that comes to the next step, get therapy, get coaching, whichever suits you, whoever suits you, find someone that understands this stuff, find someone that has lived through it because the understanding from experience in this type of situation is invaluable to helping others get through it. Okay. Um, the validation that comes from knowing the other person has experienced it can be a help when it comes to remembering the things that happen and to at least acknowledging that there is some amnesic effect going on right now. This is an important one. Start living in the truth. Start living in the reality, not the fantasy. Stop fantasizing about the good times with the toxic person, with the narcissist, okay? Stop pretending that that's the real them and the toxic stuff is something else. Both things are them. Both things are masks, okay? Both things are toxic. A narcissistic person being nice to you and love bombing you and all of that is not a positive. It's not the good times, okay? It just feels like a positive because they flooded you with oxytocin. They flooded you with that very first thing we talked about, which creates bonding. They're bonding you to them and they are not healthy. So now you're bonded to something that isn't healthy for you. Okay, so live in the truth, the truth of who they are, how they are, the way a narcissistic person thinks and operates so that you can make a choice if that's what you want in your life, okay? And so that you can see that you operate very differently and that what you see as the relationship is not how they see the relationship, okay? The more closer you can get to the truth, the less you'll be trauma bonded and affected by what happened. And yes, the truth is uncomfortable, it's painful, and it's something that takes a while to face. So if you are trying to live in the truth and you're really struggling with it, not uncommon, just keep going, get some support, okay? Super important here is learning to value yourself. What does that even mean to you? And we will talk later this week about valuing yourself, about self-healing and finding self and self-worth. So we'll go into that in another video this week, but it's important. Start to value yourself. Stop devaluing yourself. Setting boundaries. Setting boundaries is super important for all healing in every topic related to narcissism and healing from narcissism. Related to every topic around healing from narcissism. So boundaries. Understand that you can't listen to talk about the narcissist right now. You are in a state of confusion and amnesic effect from the toxic things that have happened to you. And you're trying to find your way out of this fog. You do not need the interference of people giving you reports about what the toxic narcissistic person is doing. You do not need family members or friends or anyone reaching out regarding that person. You don't need people telling you things that like it takes two to tango or whatever you don't need things that are not helpful to you learn to say no to them and that that is okay stay away from the toxic person stay away from social media of around that toxic person just stay away from them stay away from thinking about them too much what they're doing who they're with all of that not helpful to you okay the only thing that's helpful to you to think about the toxic narcissistic person at this point is how they operate, the ways in which they used and manipulated you so that you can see the truth of it. It isn't so that you can check back on them and, and keep your fantasy brain going. Okay, learn to say no to your own urges to reach back to the toxic narcissistic person. Resist those urges. Remember that the dopamine is part of this okay it is going to be difficult that's a given it's for most people going to be a challenge to not reach back to not check on them to not wonder what they're doing to not wish for the hoover to not respond to the hoover okay that's a brain chemical thing tell yourself this is just like gambling or just like any other addiction i have to resist that dopamine reaction go find other things to do and go find other places to put your attention on yourself, hopefully, on things that are beneficial for your life. Okay, 
listen to your body, listen to your, your gut reaction, listen to your intuition. If something, if you're remembering something, or if you've just come out of a gaslighting episode with a toxic person and say the narcissist just completely turned the tables and now you're feeling like you're the problem or whatever, listen to your body. Your body is probably reacting. You're prob you probably have anxiety. You probably have something going on in your gut or your stomach or your shoulders are up at your ears or you have a tension headache or something in your chest. Your chest is heavy and tight. Your facial muscles, anything, listen to your body. Relax that part of the body, okay? And then listen to your mind and listen to yourself. The more you listen to yourself, the more you learn to remember your intuition and remember to trust yourself the quicker you can get out of these situations. And that's what I got on abuse amnesia for today. If you've experienced this, let me know what you think in the comments and what has happened to you. And if you found anything helpful or useful in remembering, in healing, in anything like that, so we can help others here. If you have not done so, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. If you need coaching, group coaching, or peer support, check out the description in each video there is a list of places to find help there there's an email if you need to reach out to me so let me know what you think and i will see you guys next time take care bye bye